Hey everyone, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, I believe a month ago or so, we did some basic uh, video on the encryption versus symmetric and asymmetric encryption, uh, public key cryptography, and how does it work, like the basics of it. And I got some good response on that, and people want to understand the encryption in detail. So I'm, I'm gonna make some more videos into deep dive into how the stream and the block cipher works. Uh, this is going to be again very useful for the new starters in the security so wants to get into the pen testing and everything this is going to be a very critical thing to understand the encryption all right so the previously we talked about what the uh, symmetric and the asymmetric encryption now this time we're going to talk about the block and the stream cipher so block and the stream cipher is uh, part of the symmetric encryption uh, family uh, now uh, block cipher means uh, what it refers like the block of the plain text so what we do in the block cipher is we have the set amount of data like we would say okay we want to encrypt 64 bits of data so we'll take the chunks of the 64 bit of block we'll encrypt it and send it over now in the stream cipher it's opposite so we do bit by bit we'll, we'll see that in detail into the next slide but before we do i want to uh, talk about the two terms the confusion uh, the property of confusion hides the relationship between the cipher text and the key so here we want to make sure uh, based on the cipher text let's say the attacker uh, gets hold of the cipher text then it should not give any idea uh, to the attacker that it can derive the key and like you know decipher the cipher text so uh, that, that's what the confusion property of the encryption refers. And then the next one is the diffusion. Uh, the diffusion uh, idea of diffusion is to hide the relationship between the cipher text and the plain text. So here we are trying to protect the algorithm. So uh, if, let's say, attacker has access to the plain text and the cipher text, but it's not able to uh, figure out, okay, what the algorithm and, and how did we derive came to the uh, cipher text based on the plain text. In the previous video, we took some examples and we discussed about like in different keys and uh, how, how to make the complex keys and everything. So I'm not going to go into much detail about that. But here we are trying to make it like, you know, uh, not like impossible, but very highly difficult for the attacker to uh, to uh, get the algorithm and and that that's what like you know uh, if you if you even see today most of the algorithms being used uh, by uh, like you know most of the applications are are publicly known algorithms so like uh, uh, sha1 everyone has access to it but then the secret lies behind how you generate and how you deploy like how you use that algorithm how you derive the key uh, and how you randomize the key and everything, which is uh, like you know, which is secret to each application, and and that's what makes it difficult for anyone to decipher every, anything. And it takes roughly like 10 years uh, to I guess crack any of the algorithm. Uh, that's what the data is, and uh, by the time we uh, industry has moved on and we have some new algorithms, so uh, that that's something also uh, we consider like okay. Uh, we only allow to use, uh, so like if I would be auditing any of the application, I would only make sure that the uh, team is not doing like, you know, using, uh, let's say, their own algorithm or something, because that's highly possible. It has some uh, some vulnerabilities, and you need to have like cryptography expert to kind of look at it and approve it, uh, because it's highly possible that it has some flaws. So I always recommend to use the public algorithms. Uh, the other thing is uh, the uh, confusion and diffusion uh, is a is property of the encryption. So uh, whenever we dis we're gonna discuss the block and the stream cipher, we'll also discuss like you know uh, which one is good for confusion versus diffusion and all those things. So let's uh, let's take a look at the uh, block cipher. So as I said, like you know, it's used to encrypt and decrypt whole bo blocks of data. So for example, you have 64 bit of data. You have a, like you know every 64 bit you're gonna have a block for it. You encrypt it and send it over. Now imagine if you have like a 65 bits of data. Uh, that's that's not go going to be easy for the block ciphers because you will have 62 uh, bits of one block. The remaining three bits, like out of 65 bits, you will have you'll have to add like padding. You have to encrypt it and decrypt it and everything. It's gonna take a lot of time, resources, uh, and everything. So that's why. Uh, block cipher is mostly recommended for the fixed length of data. While the stream cipher, 
I used to break data into bits and encrypt individually. So here we are encrypting bit by bits, and which is uh, a very useful. Now, the I guess the most simple example is streaming, right? So we stream uh, videos on our smartphones and uh, smart TVs and uh, tablets and everything. So uh, it comes like we don't wait for the entire block, like. Of course, back in the days we would, but now we have like a streaming. So if you see, uh, you will keep on receiving the data, and you would stream it right away instead of like you know waiting for the entire block of the data. Uh, that would break the user experience. So uh, that's why the stream cipher is very useful uh, in that scenario. Now we'll talk about some um, advantage and disadvantage of both the block versus stream cipher. So block cipher is high in diffusion. On the opposite side, stream is very low in diffusion. Uh, we just already talked about it, like what the diffusion is. So the idea of diffusion is to hide the relation between the cipher text and the plain text. So, uh, so block uh, cipher provides that high diffusion. Uh, now the block is immune to uh, malicious injection, and the stream is not. Uh, of course, like you know, as simple as if someone has to inject anything they have to like inject within the uh, block and and that's going to be very difficult rather than like you know, injecting into the bits between the bits so that's why uh, it's very uh, like you know block cipher is difficult for the attacker to uh, malicious injection attacks uh as you saw like block is going to be slow encryption while system is going to be very fast encryption uh, because block you have to wait kind of for the entire block or chunk of the data before you can start encrypting. Uh, uh, yeah, imagine a scenario where, uh, like, you know, you have to encrypt sort of like a, a big chunk of, big, big stream of data. So, for example, uh, let's say uh, the SIM, uh, where it's getting, like, you know, endpoint is getting hit by the different devices and, and collecting the logs and everything. Now, uh, if we just wait and like you know have to encrypt everything, we have to divide into the blocks and then encrypt and then send it over. It's going to be very slow process because we are we are collecting the blocks while the stream is going to be very f quick because as as soon as we are receiving the bit, we are encrypting and send, sending it over. The other advantage of this stream is the low error propagation. Uh, so, uh, for example. Uh, uh, let's say you have a credit card, and on the credit card, of, uh, there's there's always going to be a 16 digits. There's always going to be a four-digit security code or three-digit security code, and then two, four digit of the expiration and everything. So that 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 information we know. So we can use the block cipher. Now the stream cipher. Uh, so for example, in the on the credit card, you have the name of the person who. Uh, was who uh, who is the owner of the credit card now that name there is no fixed length that that could be like you know uh, uh eight characters ten characters fifteen characters anything and and that's why it's very very critical that you cannot do it in the block cipher because you cannot just send like part of the name and then just wait for the another part of the name and then send it over rather than then the stream cipher becomes more important because there is no fixed length of the data required, so it's very it's very uh, low possibility of the error propagation when something like this uh, is gonna is gonna happen. So that's why the stream cipher is uh, is more kind of useful. So yeah, the same example that we were talking earlier, like you know the SIM, uh, which has to collect a lot of data, and now you cannot just wait for. Uh, uh, for the entire chunk of data to send over to the same for analysis, so rather we would send like data as soon as we receive. So in that that scenario, in that application, stream cipher becomes more useful. So so there are like you know uh, there are a lot of examples out there where you can use block versus stream cipher, and it's hard, it's very much it's very important for uh, for uh, someone who wants to get into the cryptography and encryption has to understand the difference and and has to understand uh, how this block cipher and stream cipher works uh in detail and and that's what uh, my intention was to uh, just provide some high level details and and I hope I have done the good job at it but if you have got any of the further questions uh, feel free to like you know uh, leave me a comment and and give me a feedback as well uh hit the like button if you like this video and I'll see you guys next.